Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Degen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of Dogecoin, ticker symbol D-O-G-E. Also happy to take requests here. So this is Ticker Requests Live, which I do every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Doesn't matter if it's a holiday. I always try to do it. And I am happy to take your requests, so let me know in the live chat, or if you're watching this after the fact, let me know in the comments of any video that I put out. Happy to take requests, whether I do them live or I might just do you know, a video on your request. So always let me know, happy to take them. And so yeah, I just wanted to go over Dogecoin. I've just, you know, uh, from all the videos that I put together, all the stocks that I cover, I have really just been, you know, thinking about, you know, some of the plays are, you know, 10% swings. Some of them are 25, 50, some of them, you know, which I tend to not always partake in them. Usually I don't, uh, you know, hundreds of percent. Uh, but the one that I really have conviction in, actually two that I have conviction in, one is Rumble, the other is Dogecoin. And, you know, just looking at the Dogecoin chart, uh, this is on the daily time frame, you know, really kind of testing uh, this previous high that we hit here on uh, March 4th that was at, uh, you know, basically... 20, 21 cents, you know, so we're kind of testing that level. It does look like, you know, it's consolidating up here. So I would expect this to be a bull flag, it to go higher. Um, and, you know, I had made a video on uh, basically it pulling back to 13 cents, going up to 30 cents, 13 going on 30. And so just right there, that's a, you know, a, a, a pretty nice swing. Uh, but then as price was going up here, I was kind of wondering if it, uh, would be rejected right around 17 cents and pull back. So that did not happen. And so, you know, really just taking a step back, looking at the weekly time frame, uh, what I see happening with Doge is that, you know, at some point over the course of the year, I do expect it to be uh, retesting its all-time highs right around 74 cents. And so from current price, uh, let's see, that is, you know, a... A move of let's see if I can draw this you know like this yeah that is a move of you know 240 percent basically from current price and I do think that it will hit one dollar a share I suspect it will go sorry one dollar a coin uh, I do suspect it will go higher than that one reason for that is uh, you know I was watching this uh, interview on uh, um, uh, Andre Jick's uh, uh, channel and he was interviewing the um, uh, Dogecoin millionaire, and he was saying that his plan was always to sell when it hits a dollar a coin. And I feel like what will happen is he'll probably sell at a dollar a coin, but then he'll just kind of, uh, you know, recognize, oh, well, crap, you know, it's continuing to go higher. And then I think he'll FOMO back in. And so I think that uh, Doge could definitely blow past a dollar. And so at the current price, you know, it seems like, you know, I have a lot of conviction in this. So I've just been excited about this. And yes, I will check. Are you uh oh? Are you asking for me to look at? I'm just going to type up because uh, there's this heart emoji that stands in the way. I'm, I think Mullen. Yeah. Um, so I I have not covered Mullen yet on the channel, and I will go over it. But my understanding of it is it, it just keeps being uh, you know uh, a reverse split after reverse split, and it's just kind of milking investors for their money. Uh, so if there is a squeeze, if there was a violent move to the upside. Um, I uh, would have to say that it might be a good time to take profits. Uh, but, you know, I will, I will go over it, you know, just to entertain it. Yeah, so let's see, 19% move. I do have the corporate actions on here, so it should, yeah, so here's a 1 for 100 reverse split. That's insane. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I remember this. There's this guy I follow on Twitter who is always just like kind of trashing uh, Mullen and the CEO, always going over the charts and just how it's been, you know, bleeding so much. And yeah, I mean, this, it just seems like, I mean, it's not so bad over here, but from this, it's just kind of like, you know, infinitely going small. Look at all these reverse splits, one for 25, one for nine, one for 100. So yeah, I mean, this, like following this reverse split, I remember this because this guy, you know, was just trash talking about Mullen. And, you know, I was thinking, yeah, but I feel like there's probably a swing around it. 
And, you know, I was considering, well, maybe I'll just buy a little bit just to see what happens. But nah, uh, I, I try to stay away from not necessarily volatile trades, but I try to, uh, when they get a little too spe speculative, like I cover a fair amount of that stuff on the channel, I feel like. But, you know, I just put out a video on like shorting the market and um, uh, another one today on natural gas. So I tend to, uh, and, and oh, I should say, hey, to you guys in the chat. Hey, Jose, how's it going? And also, hey, to the point. Um, and to the point is requesting you, uh, E U R A U D. And I'm wondering, is that a, uh, currency? Yeah, cool. I've not looked at currencies, you know, on here other than cryptocurrencies, but yeah, I will add that. And I'll also put that in the DGen ed list. Yeah. So I'll go over that. I'm just going to go over Mullen first and I'll get on to your request. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, I was thinking about, you know, maybe I could pick up some shares before the reverse split. That would be, you know, one for 100. So the low of that day, let's say the close of that day, eight bucks. So that would have been an eight cents, pretty ridiculous. But then, you know, it squeezed up that next day uh, over 100%. So that would have been a nice swing. But then as you can see, that was, you know, $8 close. Um, and we are now, you know, below that. So... So yeah, I mean, I if this does go higher, I would suspect that it'd bump into some res resistance around $6.40, maybe $6.50, just because you have these bottoms here, um, really going back to like a January 25th or January 24th, really. Um, and so I could see that as being some resistance. If we look at the volume profile, you do have, you know, because of this consolidation over here, there's going to be some resistance there. Anybody who like, let's say, uh, just thinking about like the psychology of this and somebody who might have picked up some shares, like let's say you like uh, you see this green move here, oh, it goes up 4%. I know it can squeeze higher than that. And then it goes up here, 16, almost 17% on the day. And it's like, oh, it's going to keep going. I'm going to FOMO in, I'm going to buy. And then you buy here and then, you know, nothing. And then it starts to squeeze up here and it's like, oh yeah, this is going to keep going. This is going to keep going. I've seen this before, but then it just completely reverses the following day. And so you're left just, you know, holding your shares here around eight bucks, 780 a share. And then it starts to bleed. And then, so it goes back up. I mean, yeah. So I think that like really the range of like 640 up to like $8, really that just being like uh, the reverse split close and you have all this, yeah, so because you have these lows over here, let's look at that volume profile again. Yeah, you've got this, let's see, ranging from right around 670 up to 750. Right around there is where there's all that consolidation. Do got some overlap with the, the wick down here with that. And so I could see this having a tough time getting through that. If it does, though, you know, yeah, it could potentially squeeze. But I just think this is a pretty risky one to be holding long term. As you can see, this is going back to like it's just like really like going back to, I guess, the beginning of 2023. But just over the course of the year, it's just yeah, I mean, these three reverse splits, one for 25, one for nine and which I don't get why they did this one. And then a one for 100. It's probably just like okay, you know, we, one for nine wasn't enough. Let's just go, you know, all the way with it. And, you know, that really hasn't worked because this was, you know, $8 a share. And now it's, you know, hit a low of like four eleven, four dollars $4 a share. So that, you know, going from basically eight cents here to four cents here, it's just like flirting with, you know, continuing to go down. But, you know, maybe there's something, you know, I don't really know, um, uh, the um, uh, fundamentals of the company and stuff, but it just seems like um, I I wouldn't, for me, you know, I'm not in it. I didn't even think about, I mean, I guess I thought about it, but I didn't partake in this little squeeze move there. I think that's really all that it's kind of good for. In my perspective, maybe I'm wrong, um, but I, I it just seems like a risky one. Um, but, you know, I've talked about Fisker on the channel a bunch and that's no longer listed on the NASDAQ or whatever it was. I think it was NASDAQ. And Mullen is still listed on the NASDAQ. They they have been doing reverse splits to keep on the NASDAQ, but 
it just yeah a little a little bit sketchy but yeah i do see uh to the point i will also add gala as well gala apple oh it's a cryptocurrency cool sweet i assume that's what you're requesting um, but i will put that on there actually i'm going to put that in the crypto folder um yeah cool just exiting out of that and so yeah but first i will look at the uh uh, Euro to Australian dollar, uh, which I'm not really familiar uh, with um, uh, foreign exchange stuff. I don't typically do that. So this is pretty interesting for me. Um, but let's see, what do I see with the chart? Probably take a step back, look at the weekly, maybe look at the monthly, see, let me just get a little bit bigger picture on this. Um, so I mean, you know, really just looking at this, it's moved up and then it's consolidated to the side. So I could see this as being a bull flag and that I could see it, you know, continuing higher. Um, let's see. We've got, yeah, I mean, it's like these these candles down here, you know, or found support here, at like 160, right around there, 161. Uh, based on these highs over here, wick highs as well. So, you know, this is just approximate, but um, yeah, there's... A good amount of overlap there with those wicks and did get bounced from their support and so really i mean this is like you know a big move up and this is on the monthly time frame i should note big move up here then consolidation and also within that you've got you know this pullback but then it goes up and then consolidates again so that could be you know like a little mini bull flag within this bigger bull flag uh, and if we do switch over to, let's see, the weekly right now. Yeah, I mean, like pretty much what I just said. You got this uh, moves to the upside and consolidation. This is making lower highs and lower lows. So maybe that's not so good. But I'm, you know, to me, that's just like, well, this is, um, you know, downtrending consolidation, which tends to break to the upside. So that doesn't seem too bad to me. Um, I wonder, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really look like it too much, but maybe this is like a left shoulder head. You got a little gimpy right shoulder here. If you imagine this, you know, to be a little shoulder. So maybe this could be uh, breaking out, but I just see it as more of like a um, bull flag consolidation. And then within that bull flag here, and uh, let's see from this side. Um, yeah, either way, consolidation there. That might actually, um, I don't like the white lines. They just, it's too cluttered to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, that seems like, I mean, this is looks kind of like it's uptrending. We got these wicks to the upside. So maybe that's not so good there um, because we got a high on uh, or close on March 2nd at a price of a dollar 66.16 and then we didn't get a bearish engulfing candle the next day but we've just seen these wicks not being able to get higher and we do have these uh let's see maybe I'll do up I don't I don't do parallel channels that often but maybe I can do you know from like here to this high here to this low there um yeah so just like with those highs yeah i mean i think that this looks pretty good but I, again i don't trade currencies um but it does seem like it will be going higher i don't know what happened here and i guess yeah i should before i switch over to gala i will look at this on the daily time frame and yeah, um, I just feel like bigger picture, it looks like it's going to be going higher, maybe shorter term because this is like uptrending. Um, and yeah, like I think it would really need to break out of this, you know, so if you, what are, what are the pivot points here? Um, so this is kind of rough because I drew it on the, um, I mean, no matter what, this is going to be kind of rough. But just like these pivot points here. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if it were to break above that downtrend, you could even just draw a line between the the high hit on, I believe, August 16th. You know, really just approximate. These lines aren't perfect. And then also March 5th, a line from that. I'd look for a break above that, getting two closes above that downtrend. And that would suggest to me that it'd be going a lot higher. But generally, big picture, longer term, uh, this does look like it's going higher. Um, hey, Big Bird, what's up? I will definitely put up uh, Alibaba, and of course, I will definitely go over Biora. And is there anything else? Um, uh, looks good for Baba, looks good for this week. Also, Biora, probably not going to do anything exciting until June. Uh, yeah, no problem. Happy to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, like, Biora is just, it just seems like it's such an easy play. It's just, you know, I'll accumulate more while it's down. <laughs> and I'm just going to hold those shares. So it seems like, uh, 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 it just seems like it's it's pretty good a long-term hold. And I think, yeah, like this year, just from their like earnings call, learning more, that, that was really interesting for me because I've never listened to a, an earnings call for a biopharmaceutical company. And just like the technology they're developing, just super cool. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think that it's kind of just like, wait, wait for their results to come out, wait for them to announce partnerships. It just seems like there are a ton of catalysts for potentially very bullish moves later in the year, like announcing partnerships, results from their trials. Um, and they, yeah, they just seem like, uh, they're a very impressive company. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. And then, uh, uh, to the point of saying I'm trading it on the one to four hour time frame long. Uh, and so uh, you, are you talking about Gala uh, on the one to four hour time frame? Or are you talking about uh, Euro, uh, the uh, Euro to, uh... hey, more money, what's up? I will add Mimo to this. And I'll try to go go through these a little more efficiently because didn't have too many requests, but now I've, uh, and so wait, are you... Is MEMO uh, Memorial Production Partners LP, M-E-M-P? I don't see a... Yeah, so let me know if this is... I'm going to assume this is correct. Uh, for the... Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll look at that uh, to the point. I'll look at the shorter time frame for this, um, which I, I don't typically do. I, I find it enjoyable to do during like earnings calls, but I don't typically look at stuff like intraday price action too much. This could actually, I mean, maybe you've got, I mean, I'll just draw it and you see what you think. Um, here, I'll, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, this is kind of rough, but maybe there's like a left shoulder over here, somewhat head here. This hasn't gone higher than that, hasn't really pulled back to that level. Um, but I, I mean, you could make the case this is it, and you just got kind of a fake out there. So yeah, on the four hour time frame, I could see this as being potentially bearish. Um, but yeah, I mean, it did get a bounce off that level coming back. But yeah, like... Um, you know, one thing that I, like, I don't even know if this is necessarily like a pattern, but one thing I think about with like inverse head and shoulders, they oftentimes like the right shoulder will make like a cup and handle uh, before breaking out. But does that happen uh, like in inverse cup and handle? And so like maybe this is like kind of an ugly cup. This is the handle and then break lower. And so on the shorter time frame. I could see this, you know, whatever that, wherever that neckline is. Yeah, I could see this coming down to, um, yeah, 161, 162. I kind of, you know, miraculously have that level marked from, let's see, looking at, was it the daily or whatever? Uh, let's see, going back in time. Yeah, so I could see it. I could see it pulling back to like the lows over here, looking at the, yeah, so with this being uptrending, but you know, I'm not the best at identifying flags and the directions they break. 
Um, I'm, I'm just not that great, great at telling that. Uh, but I do see, you know, these wicks to the upside looking on the daily, or this is a weekly time frame, uh, that could suggest that, you know, there aren't enough buyers above like 166. And yeah, not a bearish engulfing candle there, but um, yeah, uh, let's see, look at the one hour time frame. Oh, this is constantly trading? That's crazy. I'm, <laughs> that's funny. I have no idea what I'm doing with uh, current with foreign exchange. Um, but yeah, I could see this. Let's see, one hour time frame. Man. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, look at, like, as far as this goes, just in the four hour time frame, this looks to me like it could be breaking down. So that's, but I, you know, like I said, not too familiar with foreign exchange. But yeah, those are my thoughts on that one. Um, MIMO. Okay, cool. I'll adjust that here. Oh, and I'll delete this one. And I'm going to try to go through these in order that they were requested so I don't forget them. And so the next one on here, uh, Gala USD. This is a uh, cryptocurrency, which is actually, I don't have it on here. This is back in 2023. So um, I'm going to delete that and I will try to pull it up in... Uh, over here. So I'm not too, I need to, I don't have an account with a um, trading view. So I just need to, where do I search for stuff? Um, here, up here. So Gala uh, USD to Tether. So I'll do that. And we can look at this here. Oh man, I don't want to zoom in, I want to zoom out. All right, so, so we got that. So yeah, I mean, my take kind of, you know, just generally on cryptocurrencies right now, I feel like we might be seeing a pullback, whether that's in Bitcoin, Dogecoin, you know, whatever. Um, but at the same time, I think that we could be ripping higher before there is that pullback. Maybe there's not a pullback. And what I've been doing, I haven't really been accumulating any coins the past um, year or so. But then in like December, I started, um, you know, which is stupid. I should have been. Uh, but in December, it's like, okay, well, you know, my bottom thesis didn't play out. So it's December starting a new year. I'm just going to start adding this stuff because I think it's going to go up. And now that Bitcoin's crossed the all-time high, and, you know, I, I actually just put out a video that might be applicable for just like cryptocurrencies in general, uh, just kind of like about thinking about hitting the all-time high, hitting a new one, and just like people aren't really talking about, like where, where I work, I don't talk about cryptocurrency or trading with anybody, but if... Bitcoin, you know, whatever was making headlines. Everybody's talking about it. People be bringing it up to me at work, you know, just chatting about it. I'd overhear people talking about it. And so I'm kind of waiting for that as like a top signal, like an ultimate top signal. And, you know, that hasn't happened yet. I suspect it will um, at some point. I don't think we're there yet. I think pretty much everything's going a lot higher. And so with this trading at like 6.8 cents and the high being up at 84 cents. That's pretty insane. I don't know anything about Gala. Um, but from current price up to those all-time highs. I mean, can you tra can you trade this on Coinbase? Uh, that's a 1,100% uh, increase. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious if you can trade this on Coinbase because I... Um, I don't know if I have uh, a um, Binance um, account, but I do have a Coinbase account. So this could be something where it's just like, you know, I've just been kind of accumulating some coins, just like, eh, we'll see what happens. And if this goes up, you know, you could turn uh, $100 into, 
uh, over a thousand dollars with this. Um, no Coinbase, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really play around with too much of uh, the coins that are like not so mainstream. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like if you're if you believe in this token and or coin, uh, you know, this seems like it has a lot of upside potential, even if it's just, you know, coming back to like, you could just, you know, two X and walk away. Um, but yeah, I mean, also though, I guess good to be thinking about, you know, from current price to like returning to the lows, that's a 70% drop, which, you know, to be honest, for Bitcoin going back to the recent lows, same with Doge, it's all around like a 70 to 80% drop. So this doesn't really seem that risky. Like there's a lot more upside potential for something like this. Um, your price target for Gala is 40 cents. I mean, I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, and also that corresponding with this high over here. Um, yeah, I mean, that that seems like a good a good swing. I don't know how long that would take. Uh, but, you know, like for me, I've just been, as far as crypto goes, the uh, position I'm building that's the largest is Doge um, because I just feel like there's still a lot of upside potential for it um, and it's easy to, to trade, to move, stuff like that. Uh, Gala is a very big project. Cool. Yeah, so this is something that I, I'll probably poke around and like try to learn more about, but um yeah, I mean, I like, man, and just think about it too. Like somebody who like bought up here, <laughs> it came down uh, 92%. That's crazy. Um, so you can delete that. Um, but yeah, uh, it seems like, a, and I'm going to, I'm going to move on to, and hey, NASCAR, what's up? Is there, is there even an intrinsic value to Bitcoin? I think, I think Bitcoin's going to be, um, I think like for me, Bitcoin, I'm just thinking about it as like retirement. So yeah, I think it's going to be worth a lot more in the future and intrinsic value. I think it's, it's value is storing value, um, like the same as gold, but you know, more tangible, I guess. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm just going to scroll up in the, in the chat to see what's next. So I just went over Gala. Now I will do Baba and uh and then next by aura for big bird and man i've got okay so this is on the four hour time frame i'm going to switch over to the daily got apparently a bunch of gaps on here that i've pointed out <laughs> it's like looks like star wars or something just tons of lasers going on um yeah and so actually i could share this um i could do this actually right now oh well, um i don't know let's see best way to do this um yeah i i will share it after the stream uh there was i believe um a it might have been a, it's a show that's on the verified investing channel and baba was gone over in that so i can share that video and i believe let's see um i think it was bullish on it um i do see that there's this breakout from this downtrend and so a pullback, I, I feel like I can't remember when I did the last BABA video, but I think a pullback to fill this gap down to like 70, let's see, the high on Wednesday was 71.69. A pullback to like 71 bucks, I think that could be really good than testing the top of this wedge. And if that is respected, yeah, I think it could be going higher. And it's not too surprising that it did get rejected from around here because of this orange uptrend. Let's see what that's based on. Uh, based on the open uh, from December 11th and then the high here from uh, January 16th. So that's a little bit arbitrary. Um, but yeah, I mean, it does seem like, you know, we've gotten some bounces around that level. So, you know, just right around there, just being kind of approximate, did get rejected from there. So that's not terribly surprising. So I would think a pullback to like 71 that could be perhaps a good dip buying opportunity, but you'd also want to make sure that it doesn't break below uh, this downtrend. Let's look at what that downtrend is based on. Um, it goes back. I think I actually did that on the weekly time frame, or you know, 
I think these were probably Fridays. Uh, no. Uh, let's see, the high here, uh, January 26th of 2023, the high of 19, wait, sorry, 119.69. And then the other pivot point is the high that was hit on November 15th of 2023, that being at a price of $86.66. So from those two pivot points, that's how you get that downtrend. So, you know, if you want to throw it up on your chart, um, that's probably a good level to be monitoring. Do we get a close below it? So like ideally it dips down to, let's see, what was the the close on Wednesday? That was um, $71.59. So let's say there's a, a wick down to like $71.50, but then a close above. Really, I mean, you want to see I guess it depends on the day. Like if it's Monday, you wouldn't want to see it close below like 7180, something around there. Or if it's, uh, let's see, Tuesday, you really wouldn't want to see it closing below like 7160, somewhere around there. Just see that it's respecting this downtrend. And if it is, that could be, you know, we've gotten these fake out breakouts. You know, this, you know, Gotten one up here, then a big move up, but then it, it was all pulled back, you know, following this, you know, big red candle. Uh, lots of, you know, big wicks to the upside. Uh, pull back right around to that level, but couldn't hold. Reject it again, back under it. So, yeah, I just I just look for a pullback to around 7150, 71. That could be a good dip buying opportunity, but, you know, like you can never time the bottom. You can never buy the exact bottom. So you might just want to look, does it pull back to those levels and then does it close above this downtrend? And if it does close above that downtrend, that could be, you know, a sign that the bottom is in and that this could be going a lot higher. But I do think it would be good to listen to, I'm pretty sure it's Benjamin Poole's uh, take on it. Um, he probably does some really good analysis. I don't think I've actually watched the video. If I did, it was a few days ago. Uh, but I think he was bullish on Alibaba. So something to consider there. Oh, and yeah, it might just be like here. Yeah, I think this is probably what he was doing. Um, you know, because I'm not, I'm still, you know, like learning this stuff. Uh, but from like the low there to the low here, that's a higher low. And so, you know, really, I mean, you would want to, I don't have it drawn exactly here. Um, and actually, I probably will. What's the low on this day? On Wednesday, the low was 70.58, so I'm just gonna, just so I, if I come back to this chart, those are fixed into place. So that's right there, 70.58. All right, so that's locked into place. I'm just gonna make that line a little bit thicker. So yeah, that's another line that you wanna be looking for. If, if it does maybe break below this downtrend, you don't wanna see any closes below this uptrend. There have been wicks to it, no wicks below it, and so you want to see that it's respected. Maybe you get a wick below, but as long as you don't get a close below. Um, so that's those are two lines that I would be keeping a close eye on, as well as this gap fill. But if you are going to be uh, paying a visit to either of these lines, you know, you're pretty much going to be filling that gap. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then I will look at Biora next, but I'm just going to scroll down to the chat, see what else people have been putting in there. Um, and so... Uh, to the point, it says, uh, I collected two million of Gala. Dang. Yeah, so I hope it goes to 40 cents for you. Uh, whole crypto coins like this on the chart. Uh, and then so Jose says, I used to own Gala on OKC, OKC coin. Or OK, OK coin. <laughs> Uh, and then let's see to the point gala became so big since the last bull market they made gala chain and made games films music oh cool so it's like um yeah it's like um i guess a metaverse coin or something that there's more like uh uh layered applications games stuff i like to be honest i don't really know too much about um those kind of coins but it reminds me of like um sand and uh you know those uh, more interactive type of coins and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, and do I track? Do I track my net worth each month? No, I I do not track my net worth each month. <laughs> I assume maybe because of this channel, it's gone up a tiny bit, but probably not much. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and so, yeah, Nemo, I will look at Nemo. I do have it up there. I'm just going to go over Biora really quick. I did just put out a video on it, so I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, but yeah, like uh, Big Bird, I believe Big Bird was saying that not expecting too much until like Jul uh, until June. One thing that could be encouraging is if this is forming a higher low, maybe that could be going up. Uh, it also, yeah, 2.73% 2, 2 up in the, uh, I guess that's just three cents in the after hours after coming down 6% on the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just think that this is a great one to accumulate these levels that I have marked here. Uh, perhaps, you know, really just going from this low here, the all-time low, 75.6 cents up to this high here, 199. Um, let's see, the uh, 786 is at a price of a dollar too. So maybe that's a good dip buying level. It was a good dip buying level here on March 14th. Maybe that's revisited again. Uh, but, you know, it does seem like these, uh, the close on the 14th was at a price of a dollar eight. Uh, that was also the open on, let's see, the open and the low on the 15th. And it does seem like we do have a lot of candles having their basis right around a dollar eight. Did get a low on Thursday of a dollar eight. I think a dollar eight could be, you know, acting as support, could be respected there. And so that might be a bottom right around current price, you know. Uh, but if we don't have big news coming out, uh, I, I think that, um, you know, once partnerships are announced uh, later this year, once results from uh, the second uh, stage of their trials and uh, other trials that they have, uh, clinical trials going on, uh, it seems like the results are going pretty well. Uh, the trials are going well. So I think we'll, we will get some good results. I think there are a lot of catalysts for this to move later in the year. And with this now, you know, up from these lows, and actually, maybe there's something here. I will move over to um, Mimo in just a second. But yeah, just drawing this here. Maybe that's not so good. Maybe that's a fake outbreak, though. But, you know, just connecting those two lows, one from the low hit on February 23rd and the other one from March 14th. Did look like it was acting as support here, but we broke below it. So I would look for a close on Monday above... 120 basically uh, because then you know like reclaiming uh, this uptrending level as well as this yellow downtrending level based on these touch points here the high from November 9th as well as the high from December 28th to get a wick up to that and uh, you know it does seem like it's been acting as kind of general resistance it will be good to get a close above that but really what we don't want to see is a close below Thursday's low, which was a price of $1.08. That could be a confirmation of a breakdown from this higher low trend line. And then that could suggest we might even be doing a full retracement, whether that's going down to the low from February 23rd at a price of 78 cents, might even be coming back to 75.6 cents or going lower if we do get a confirmation uh, below Thursday's low. So do keep an eye on that. Uh, and then following that, you want to get a uh, no closes below the low that was hit on March 14th. That was at a price of $1.01. We get a close below that. That could really suggest uh, a good amount of downside because then, you know, it's below pretty much all of the support, including the uh, 786 at 102. Some, so some levels to be keeping an eye on. And so, yeah, um, let's see. From this list, I think Mimo is the next one, so more money. I will definitely be looking at that. And I'm just making sure. Let's see. Um, so I got that for more money, Mimo. XLM, price prediction for 2024. 20, I will add that up here as well. I'm not sure if I can look at that. Oops. Yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully there's price action in here. Um, and hey, Justin, what's up? A Tilray, yeah, I'll definitely throw a Tilray up here. And so I'll, I'll look at that once I've caught up on this list. Just trying to do them in order because I forget them if I don't do them in order. They get lost. And so, yeah, looking at MIMO, this is Airspan Networks Holdings. I'm just going to read their profile so I know a little bit more about them. So Airspan Networks Holdings is a designer and producer of wireless network equipment for fourth generation or 4G and fifth generation 5G networks 
for both mainstream public telecommunications service and providers and private network implementations. So the company offers a range of software to find radios. Okay, so we kind of get the idea. And as I'm reading this, I am just realizing, you know, I haven't done this. So cheers, everybody. Happy Sunday. If you celebrate the holiday today, happy Easter. If not, that's fine too. I, you know, for me, just an excuse to hang out with family. Didn't do anything too crazy. Ate some food. But yeah, happy Sunday. I'm excited for the week ahead. Should be, um, should be a pretty good one. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, I've been working the second shift at my job, so I work from uh, two thir- two in the afternoon to like ten thirty. It's my last week doing that. Next week I'll be doing a different rotation, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. A change. Uh, and yeah, happy Easter. Uh, Tilray has its earnings on the ninth. Cool. I'll definitely want to do probably a dedicated video for just Tilray. Leave the other. Uh, uh, cannabis stocks on the side and just do that for t- for their earnings. So that's a good idea. Uh, but yeah, I'll first go over Mimo and then Stellar and then I'll do Tilray. Just trying to keep them in order. Uh, but yeah, so looking at Mimo here, I think one thing that would be good for this, just to get kind of a general idea, I'm just going to make sure all the levels are there. So that's good. I'm just going to do a Fibonacci retracement from the bottom here. So that's at uh, 7.11 cents going up to the high here. 42.4 cents. Let's see if I can get that lined up just right. Okay. And so from that, we have broken below the 786. So it doesn't look too good as far as that goes. Um, and yeah, but maybe there's something. Let's see. Um, maybe because we do get a run up in the middle of that. One thing that is concerning about this, I would say that just like looks a little bit fishy to me is there's this big wick up on January 12th and then this red day with no wick up and then a gap up. So it's like, man, there's this gap that needs to be filled, you know, the high of that day, which was also the open 8.83 cents. So I could see price going down to filling that at this point, just because it has broken below um, the 786. But if we do another retracement, this should include, let's see, what's uh, the uh, 1618 extension. And so maybe that would be a level that uh, might offer some guidance. I feel like it's probably going to be pretty low, though. Um, So the low on this day, 14 cents. So I'm just going to try to get this lined up. It's going to be approximate, but... Uh, oh, dang it. Wrong tool. Let's see. Uh, 14 cents, 14.02 up to the high here at uh, 29 cents. I'm just going to adjust these uh, 29 and 14. And so from this, the 1618, yeah, I expected it to be pretty low. Um, that is at a price of 4.73 cents. Um, maybe there's this other, I think this is just going to be pretty hand wavy, uh, but there's this little run up here. Maybe there's something with that, which this high was, uh, 18.74. I'm just trying to get it just right close as close as I can get it. Yeah. It's like eight, six, five. That is, you know, right around a gap fill. So I wonder if this is coming down to fill the gap here. And so really, like I, I feel like the takeaway for me for this is following this big run up, it's pulled back lower than the 786. So it's like I don't really see any clear levels that it'd be finding support at. And then from doing these retracements, this extension, this next level down does line up with a gap fill over here. So that makes sense to me. Uh, maybe if we... Look at the volume profile. Maybe there's, yeah, like um, coming down to this volume shelf right around nine cents, eight point nine three cents. So and and also too, looking at this, you know, you got down moves and then it's just been consolidating, and it hasn't been able to. Let's see. Um, you know, it's like. 
it's forming. Yeah, this is, let's see, I'm just gonna put the shift on so that's flat. And this is, that is a descending triangle. Descending triangles tend to break to the downside. It's a bearish formation. And so basically my understanding of how those work is that basically you have this downtrending level. And so as price goes up, it's testing that line, but that's just like compressing it lower. And so it's just not able to get higher. There are just no buyers up here and those buyers keep fading. But you know, this flat line here, I think this, this should be flat. Um, that is just repeatedly being tested over and over and over. And because of that, you're eventually gonna dry up, like buyers from that level are eventually gonna dry up and then it's gonna break lower. And so it's just because you're hitting the same price over and over and over. Whereas up here, that price is changing, suggesting there's weakness. I mean, it could, you know, this could be like a spring, it's coiling up to launch, but these do tend to, you know, the buyers down here tend to dry up because you've got buyers up here, you know, uh, you got buyer, like for this candle, you have buyers around this level, but then it pulled back and then those buyers just keep fading down here. And so eventually I think that this will break to the downside. Sorry if that's not what you want to hear, but I think like eight to nine cents uh, would be a target. Uh, so that's what the chart's telling me there. Um, but yeah, just a lot of weakness, really mainly coming from it being below the 786 and then uh, seeing that gap in this pattern. But I could be wrong, it could break to the upside. And uh, so yeah, I'll look at um, and more money you're also asking. Oh, look at news. Oh, it's up 5% in the after hours. Look at the news. Yeah. <laughs> I, thanks for telling me to look at the news. Um, receives up to seven, uh, sorry, 95 million equity financing, eliminates all debt and becomes private under fortress major owner. Yeah. So how would that be trading if it's like private? Um, so I'll just click on this. Uh, so I'll just read this real quick. Uh, a provider of ground, okay, so what's the news? Airspan and its U.S. subsidiaries have filed voluntary package Chapter 11 proceedings in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware, the court in order to implement the agreement. It has received support from, yeah, I mean, um, this just seems risky. Um, I Like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, so... This, yeah, this news with it being, you know, that it secured money, I think that's good. But that, yeah, so Airspan receives up to 95 million equity financing, eliminates all debt and becomes private under Fortress majority ownership. Uh, so I wonder, you know, what um, files chapter 11 to expedite restructuring. Lists estimated liabilities in the range of a million. To yeah, so I'm, I'm not that familiar with bankruptcies and stuff. Uh, but just looking at the chart, I'd say that this is going down with a bankruptcy here filing uh, chapter 11 doesn't seem too good. So yeah, I, I think if it's, if you're like waiting for a squeeze, I, I would think it's squeezed to the downside. Um, and you know, it had already squ squoze here. So, but yeah, and then I will add uh, Litecoin. I, I see your comment on Litecoin. I'm just going to type up so I can read, uh, Litecoin big squeeze now. Yeah, I've I've been following Litecoin. I actually started buying a little bit of it. I just do very slow like uh, dollar buys of coins, and I started adding Litecoin to it. And um, yeah, so really just for for swings, making uh you know small amounts of money as I basically stack Dogecoin, um, and Bitcoin really, and Ethereum Classic. I like those. Those are my uh, more longer term cryptos, I think. Uh, but yeah, I will look over XLM first and then I will get onto Tilray. And so looking at XLM, I like kind of just the way that I'm thinking, and this doesn't have all of the history of uh, cryptocurrencies here. And this, this stops in 2023. Dang it. Yeah. So I got to look at this in trading view. So I'll just pull that up here. This is actually good for me to uh, be getting practice looking at stuff um, like this. So I will do XLM 
futures. I don't want futures. Bitfinex. I don't know if Bitfinex is best place, but I'll do this um, and adjust this. Yes, this is trading at like 14.185 cents. I'll just zoom in here to make this a little bit nicer. Um, and to be honest, sorry if um, I'm ever blocking stuff. I don't always pay attention to it. Or if Ed's head's blocking stuff, um, which might have happened the last time I was looking at the chart here. But um, yeah, I mean, what I see in basically all cryptocurrencies right now with Bitcoin at its all-time high, Bitcoin runs, and then, you know, we get an alt season. Profits are taken from Bitcoin and moved into altcoins. I think what we could see here with XLM is a return to the all-time highs. It's a 460-plus percent move to the upside. Um, just depends on how long you want to wait. But yeah, XLM has been around for a long time. Um, I remember this like when I was first introduced into crypto back in like 17. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it's probably not going anywhere. Um, yeah, this is coming down. Dinosaur. Um, yeah. And so with this, let's see. Um, I wonder if it, like, I, I really think, uh, you know, like inverse shoulder, head and shoulder patterns are pretty interesting. And so I wonder if it's doing something like that, whether it's like that there or perhaps, you know, like this little inverse head and shoulders there. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know if this giant shoulder invalidates it or something. Uh, but if that is the case, you know, let's see. Sorry if I just lisped in the microphone. I, I don't didn't mean to do that. So let's see that. Oh, crap. Let's see. Uh, I'm just taking ruler here. So from the base of the head to the neckline, that represents a move of like 14 cents. And so I can't move that. So I just have to do another measurement. So 14 cents from this neckline, that will put price right around 30 cents. And so that represents an 86, 90% uh, move to the upside. So yeah, I think there's a lot of potential with this and even just going to the all time highs, that's kind of you know how I'm thinking about stuff with Doge and, and the other altcoins is just what's what's the move to the um, to the all time highs. If Bitcoin's at the all time highs now, I do think it's gonna be going higher. And the video that I just put out on Bitcoin and Dogecoin do kind of a, I, I think I actually do a measured move on Bitcoin that would suggest price is going to like 127,000, uh, approximate, and um, yeah, I mean if that if it's rallying that much more, going that much higher than the uh, um, uh, current price, than the all time highs, then I think that these alts could really run up a lot. So yeah, I mean I'm pretty much all cryptocurrencies, you know, with the you know thought that it's quite possible they might be pulling back um, in the near in the near term. Uh, but I think like by the end of the year, I think they're all going to be in really good shape. But I, of course, could be wrong. But I, I'm excited about cryptocurrencies and whatnot. And so, yeah, I'll go over Tilray. Got this right here. So you have earnings coming up on the 9th. One thing that I'd caution about this, which I'm sure... Uh, Justin, I think you were asking about Tilray. I'm sure this is not what you want to hear, uh, but with it having this big move up prior to earnings, you know, so this is, let's see, 64%, 65% basically from the lows there before earnings. Uh, let's see, are there any bearish signs or anything like that? But I, I just think that, I mean, one thing, this is forming a double top. You know, got a wick wick up to here, but couldn't close above 254, which was the high on January 9th. So I'd really keep an eye on, can we get a close above 254, which would be, you know, getting really basically a confirmation above this level. And then following that close above it, can we get a second close above it 
above that new high. So, you know, whether that's above 263.5 or, um, you know, whatever that new level would be, I think we just need to see confirmation of a close above 254. That could be showing some strength, but this could be, you know, let's see, channels, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, so what I could see happening with this, which is, you know, bullish long term, but perhaps not something you want to hear short term with earnings coming up, I could see price pulling back to around $2 a share and then finding support on this white downtrend, which is like this parallel channel. Sorry, I keep zooming in and zooming out. Um, but yeah, I mean, like price has been in there for a good amount of time. It does look like it was, you know, roughly, you know, respected over here. But from these pivot points, price has been within there. And so I think, you know, this is a great breakout from that downtrend. But I think it's probably running out of steam. And so I could see that around earnings, it might be pulling back following the earnings. And so it might be good to, tr at, like, I I had a small position in Tilray, which was like kind of laughable how small it was. Um, I just, I cover too many stocks and I want to get involved in all of them, but then I end up just having very small positions in a lot of them and it's like, it's pointless. Um, so yeah, I just, to simplify my portfolio, I don't have any more Tilray. I wish I did. Uh, but, you know, with it being up here at like 250, right around there, I'd expect it to be having a tough time getting above that level, forming a double top here, pulling back. So, you know, if I did have a position in it, I'd want to trim uh, a fair amount of the position and then I'd wait to buy back around $2 a share, um, which, you know, considering that this downtrend is lower than $2 a share. And actually a good thing to do with this be doing a Fibonacci retracement. So we got the low here at uh, 160, going up to the high here at 263.5. Are there any levels that stand out? Yes, yeah, so the 618 is right around two bucks, 199.5. I could see price returning there after earnings. Um, and quite possibly, it could be doing a, a retracement to the 786. That's at $1.82.1. Not that that point one matters, but that could coincide with a retracement to test this downtrend and then ask support. So, you know, it could be like a, a really nice swing to trim here or around here, around 254, and then buy back those shares. Maybe, you know, a portion of them around $2, a portion of them at 182, but maybe that doesn't happen. Maybe I'm wrong. And so that's why I think like trimming is good. If you sell everything here, then, you know, maybe it squeezes up way higher, you know, following earnings. Maybe it goes up to $3 or higher after earnings. Then you still got some for that. But if it does go lower, then then you've got some on the side that you can add back in if it does go lower. Um, so that's, that's what I would do if I had like a big position in Tilray. Um, but, you know, you got to, like everybody's different. Everybody manages uh, the emotions, the... Um, uh, stress, the uh, uh, fear, greed, you know, all of that. Everybody manages that stuff differently. And so for me, the way that I manage it, I'd, I'd trim pretty heavily and I'd expect to buy back at these levels. And one thing that I've found, you know, from the videos that I do, whenever I go over all of these FIB levels, what I do is I like average into a position as it goes down. And it's like, no, what I should do is 50% retracement. That seems likely. That's at like 212 that's when I should start adding back in. Not at the 236, not at the 382, but the 50%, and then the 61%, and then the 786. Um, and, you know, maybe it even dips lower than that. We got this purple uptrend based on the lows over here. So, you know, the low uh, from June 21st, and then also the low hit on November 13th. So that purple uptrend... Um, it's quite possible price could be returning to that. That could be coinciding with a test of this white downtrend top of that channel and then moves higher. Um, and that could also, you know, correspond with 172, this orange line here. That's a little bit arbitrary though, so I wouldn't put too much weight into that. But this purple uptrend, maybe there's something there. If that does coincide with the 786 uh, or this uh, the top of the channel, 
I think that could be a great, great dip buying opportunity because there, clearly there's a lot of potential uh, with the cannabis sector. Lots of good news coming out in the future. Progress. That's what you want. So yeah, I I feel like it's probably going to pull back around earnings, but that could be a great dip buying opportunity. Oh, and I guess I should look at you know the RSI here. Is there anything that suggests? So this is. Let's see. Um, it's bait, like RSI is about the same as it was, you know. Or this is actually, so this is a higher high here, lower high where it currently is. I'm just going to delete that so it's a little clearer to see. But yeah, so we got the higher high here, lower high here. And then with the RSI, we have a lower high and a higher high. And so that is bearish divergence. But with that being said, price could continue higher and uh, the RSI could continue higher. That would then negate. Uh, the bearish divergence, but price would have to go up to 336 to negate that bearish divergence. That, in my opinion, with earnings right around here, seems unlikely, but maybe it keeps going. Um, but yeah. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll skip to the next ticker, which I think is uh, Litecoin, but yeah, I'm just going to read your comments, Justin. Appreciate your thoughts. If it does go back down, I see it has great buying opportunity. DEA could approve Schedule 3, and Canada has the Cannabis Act up for renewal April 16th. That's good to know, right before April 20th too. So that could be, you know, a lot of catalysts around there. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, yeah. Um, but it also could be, that stuff could be sell the news type of events. So I think it's good to like uh, be prepared for, uh, you know, downside if that does happen. But if it does uh, keep going higher, that you still got some to just hold on to and forget about. Yeah, you never know. Um, I mean, I think this was a uh, pretty beautiful bottom, you know, kind of like fake out broke below this um, uptrend and, uh, and formed this double bottom here. So it's uh, really kind of like a triple bottom here because there's a little bit of a double one there, double tap. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the cannabis stocks have been exciting to cover. And so um, I'm probably just going to release a clip of this uh, just because it, it saves me time to do clips from these live streams, I'll probably do a clip for, uh, on my coverage of Tilray. So thanks for requesting it. And then I'll um, have that out. And maybe people will not like that. I think it could be a good time to trim. Whenever whenever something runs up a bunch, I'm like, eh, it could be like a, it happened with Palantir. People love those videos. But then I start to say, eh, I think it could, could go down. Those videos don't get views. But, you know, I think that, you know, there's a lot of great potential with Tilray. So... Yeah, no problem, Justin. Thanks for the suggestion. And so now I will switch over to Litecoin. And, you know, I have been doing this for an hour now. Happy to take more requests if people do want me to go over them. Uh, but I'll probably, you know, wind this down pretty soon. And so Litecoin, yeah, this is, let's see. So I think what would be really good, so this is on the date, well, this is on the weekly time frame. I guess we just, uh, yeah, so this is, the new and actually, um, I might actually switch over to um, Trading View because I don't really like how Webull does the uh, cryptocurrencies. I don't know exactly what the uh, closes are for them for the weeks and stuff, but I think that this would be, yeah, because this is, yeah, um, it also gets kind of wonky around the um, change of the week, change of the day, uh, and so that is Litecoin market cap don't want that do this all right and so yeah i have not i have not looked at litecoin that much i've always been intrigued by it and um yeah, so I mean, it does look like maybe there's some, I'll just zoom in. I, well, I mean, th I, this is really like kind of my thought process with the altcoins right now. This is basically the extent of my thought process with them. What's the current price? Okay, what's the all-time high? That is 273% to the all-time high. That seems like a good trade. Um, but, you know, with that, it does, yeah, it actually looks like it's uh, at, quite a good about, amount of resistance. You got these this double bottom here. 
and uh, you know consolidation over here rejected here and but it does look like you know I don't even have to draw anything for this with that line there and actually maybe um, let's see no yeah so with it like this what we have here is a little Litecoin cup and a handle here and now we're testing that it does look like this is a bull flag this is exactly uh, what was needed didn't have enough juice back here in uh, July of 2023 couldn't get above that level got rejected pulled back this was a great time to be accumulating although pretty boring I imagine um, but yeah so here you know very clearly I mean actually I don't even know if that could be you know because you could draw trend line from here to there yeah look at that that's pretty cool um, that line's approximate, but if I do zoom in on it, what looks like we got was, you know, test here, rejection, pull up, close above, retest. I think this is going higher. This is looking pretty good. Yeah, Litecoin, Litecoin's looking really good. Yeah, I just started, actually, I think, I think on this day, on the 29th, I think I started doing my, like, daily buys, which is very small. And uh, it's like, eh, well, it just went up, uh, you know, 16% basically on the day. It's probably going to pull back. So I'll probably be holding the bag for a little while. But I'll just be accumulating, no big deal. And yeah, this back test, boom. That looks beautiful. So yeah, look at that. Look at that Litecoin cup. Cup, pullback test, boom. So let's see. I'm actually, I'm not sure if we can do a measured move technically with something like this. I don't know what exactly that's valid with, but going from the base of that cup to the top of the cup, that's a um, move of 26, 27 bucks. So from current price, that, oh, really I should do it from the uh, base, that, the top of that cup, 26 bucks. Well, 26, 27, you know, right around there. They put price right around 130. And so let's think about what is going on with 130 that might be resistance. So I might take a step back so we can think about that. What is at 130? 140 right here does look like, uh, you know, that was support here in uh, September of 2021 support again December 2021 and then resistance over here February 2022 let's see what this high was 133 so yeah this this pivot high here might be you know one to pay attention to like 133 130 to 133 I think that's where price could be going for Litecoin so, and you know, it'd probably just be a short term uh, bump. So, uh, but yeah, definitely looks good there. And so, yeah, more money. And uh, Jose, I see your comment there. Uh, please check CENN -E real quick if you got time. Definitely got time. I will just switch over to Weeble to look at that. And I will do CENN -E Centro. All right, let's take a look. Dollar forty-two did just have a one for ten reverse split, and it's already at a back at a dollar thirty-two. This is a daily time frame, so not looking too good in that sense. Uh, but maybe there are some levels that we want to be looking at. Let's see. So it's going from the low here, which was $1. Which, so yeah, I mean, this would have been a one for 10. This would have been 10 cents. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, if I, you know, draw, you know, just to the lows here, this does look like, yeah, so you can see from this line, it's just like, it's not exact. Let's see. Um, I'll make sure it's exact. 
I just like to do that. The low here, 111, so 110, one. All right, so from that, you can see, based on this low, got multiple tests here, wicks down, no wicks below. Another test here on February 26th, no wick below. And then you get this big red candle on March 6th, going down four, almost four and a half percent on the day, get a close below, but you don't get confirmation. And then the next day, close above, get a wick below, but no close below again. Starts to move up. And then here, you get a close below, but you can argue maybe it's you know on the line. So not too crazy. Then here, you get a close below on March 21st, close below that line. And that looks, I mean, if just based on those two points, you know, maybe you could adjust it, but you know, I see it. That's a pretty clear line there. You get one close below, and then you get a close below that previous day's low. And so that is what I understand to be confirmation of this breakdown. You get a move up to test it, get rejected there, close lower, and then consolidating here. So you can think about this, forget about the wicks here. Just look about this red candle, and then you got consolidation there. What does that look like? That looks like a bear flag. Big move down, coming down, uh, let's see, on that day. It actually you know, went up relative to the previous day's close, but this red candle opened up here, 145, closed down here, and then consolidation. I feel like it's going to be breaking to the downside. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I mean, there are a number of things about this A, it looks like it's broken below this uptrend, which has been tested many times. Um, it's gotten wicks below and then a, and closes below, multiple closes here, which seem to be confirming that breakdown, a retest of it and rejection, and then a bear flag here, consolidation. So I could see this going lower. And so with that being said, I'm not the best at stop losses, uh, but what I could see Picking one of these lows is probably a good level to say, I'm not going to hold it if it goes any lower than that because I think it's going to just keep going. And so what I could see that being, you could pick you know any one of these lows. And you know if stop losses aren't your thing, that's fine too. That's one thing I've not been good at, and then I've just like end up held, holding the bag for you know too long of a time. So I feel like it's something I need to get better at. And so maybe this pivot low here, that was at a price of $1.25, so right there. We do got these, I mean, that could be the bottom though. If it does break below 125, maybe you wanna have a stop loss at 124. Uh, so that maybe it does pull back and bounce there. But you know, with these, and yeah, you know, I mean, that seem, that makes sense to me. I mean, here you get a low, 125. Here you get a low of 125. We have not seen any price action at least on the daily time frame, which as far as I understand, that's how stop losses work only during market hours, or perhaps you could set it to be only during market hours. If it does break below 125, if it hits 124, that's a lower low, and I would think that it would be probably pulling back. And uh, let's see, I mean, it could be pulling back to right around this level, 111, and then it could be, you know, it's an ugly head, but maybe this would be a left shoulder here, and then actually, um, maybe that is what it's formed. You know, a left shoulder here, head here, right shoulder here, and it's breaking. Um, but you could also think of this: maybe this is a left shoulder, this is an ugly head, and then it just need, it can come down to uh, one one eleven, one ten, one twelve around there before going lower. See, I don't think this one looks good. I think it looks pretty risky. Uh, look like it's breaking down. Um, hey, Nameless, what's up? SOXS and SPXU. I always wonder, uh, do you always mistype SPXU because you're messing with me or uh, do you just get too excited? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll look over those. I did just put out a video on them. I think you'll like the thumbnail. Um, and yeah, SPXU. Oh, damn it. I just retyped uh, SPXU and SOXS. And then also I see Anas uh, blink charging. I will add that as well. I just try to do these in order, so I'll go over yours after I look over it. I'll do SPXU and SOXS.
pretty quick just because I did do a video on them. Maybe kind of a long video. Ooh, I don't know that I put chapters on it. I need to put chapters on that. Um, dang it, yeah. I think um, I, I screwed that up. No, yeah, I need to put chapters on it. Or timestamps. I, I list them as chapters because that's how YouTube refers that, to them as, but they're timestamps. Uh, bullish on PMEC. Okay, so PMEC. I'll look up that one as well. And so first, yeah, I'll look over uh, SPXU. And so basically with this one, you know, I just said in the video, I really I went over like the SPX and SMH, that's the semiconductor ETF, just went over some bearish signs with them. And with the SPXU, um, it's quite possible this is a double bottom. It is quite possible though that because the SPX which I've got to show if I'm talking about this. Damn it. SPX. Um, so this, you know, I, I think I drew this yellow line in last week's stream. But yeah, I mean, it's it's broken below this uh, uptrend. That was the base of that wedge. You know, it's broken below it multiple times. I had viewed this as a close below and a confirmation here. Uh, but I don't think that was, Gareth Soloway did not consider this to be a break below it. He did not go over that. So I don't know if our lines are different, if the charts that we're doing are just a little bit different, but he did not view this as a close below. It seemed like a pretty clear close below to me, uh, but you know, maybe I just drew my line a little bit off and then, you know, the confirmation here, but then, you know, so, okay, maybe that's not it. This very clearly a close below, and then we get a bearish engulfing candle following it. So that seems like, you know, we've broken below this, the bottom of that wedge, but we could still be consolidating to the upside, still being below that wedge and, uh, you know, but being above this yellow uptrend. So, I mean, we hit an all-time high on Thursday, so we could continue to go higher. So the bottom may not be in for SPXU, SH, or SOXS. So good to be cautious of that. But it also could be, you know, getting around a double bottom. And yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like something's got to be happening soon. Um, and from, you know, like this price. Yeah, and also, I guess I didn't go over this in the video. But this, actually, I think I probably did mention it. 6.66, uh, I don't think I did. Uh, but yeah, an extension from here down to 6.66, we're below that. And I don't, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's at a discount, but um, yeah, I've been like flirting with you know, this. So maybe we're going to be forming a double bottom. Maybe we've, we've already formed it. This hammer candle could suggest reversal, big wick down. Um, and yeah, I mean, like the lowest close that we've seen is this one from the 27th. Um, yeah, so I think it's like good time to accumulate, but also have like be patient because it takes a while for bubbles to burst. SPXU, uh, this one, you know, maybe this is a bear flag, you know, it did go up, but then it dropped and then consolidated. So maybe this will go down, but looking at like the SMH from the video, if you check that out, uh, did have a bearish engulfing candle and, and it just seems like, I do think that it will actually go higher because, um, uh, the SMH will go higher, um, and so in turn, this would go lower. So I do think that we could be seeing SOXS back around like 286, and so there could be more dip buying opportunities around that level below it. So if you know one is wanting to add to the position, average down, I'd wait for a pullback because I think SMH is going to go higher. Um, and so I'll just show that real quick here, but that is in the video. Um, yeah, so basically just like, you know, got this bearish engulfing candle, but then downtrending consolidation, got a gap up from that, more downtrending consolidation. And then from current price, that's about a 6% move to the upside to form a double top here. Maybe that's the top. So um, I, I think um, I think that, yeah, I mean, I just put out a video short, short the stock market with Margot Robbie and the, the bubble bath on the front. So I'm, I'm compelled by it, but 
you know, it might take some time. So my position is larger, larger than it's ever been, but not super huge as far as uh, SOXS goes. Uh, but for me, you know, I have 100 shares of it. So I've just been selling covered call every week, which is pretty lame. Um, but that is, um, let's see, um, I'm able to make like a dollar a week selling covered call with a strike of $4. My average is lower than $4. I don't think price is going to $4 just yet. I think it's going to be pulling back. And also I heard from somebody in a comment that SOXS is going to be doing a reverse split on the 15th of April, I believe. I imagine it'll be a one for 10. And the only reason why that's happening is because price is getting so low. And so rather than trading at $3.20, it'll be trading for $32. Um, and I think that's just because price is getting so low. They have to do it. And so I don't think that'll affect volatility or anything like that because it's not like a, a corporate decision or anything with a company. It's just you know management of the ETF. Price is getting so low, they've got to do it. Uh, but then you know 100 shares becomes 10 shares. You can't sell covered calls anymore. Um, so that's going to be an issue for me, but I'll just have to buy more. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, so I and then I will look over blink charging. I did just do a recent video on that. So for me, yeah, I think I did a video on Friday. And so this is interesting. This is this is a tough call. And so I think the video that I put out on Friday it was during market hours and it was pulling back some, the close makes this a little difficult. And so there are a couple of reasons for that. One is because it does suggest indecision because you got this big wick to the upside, also a big wick to the downside. Um, and you know, that wick to the upside did hit, looks like a high. Yeah, so as I was recording that video, the high was $3.14. That did not change. That does correspond with the top of this downtrend, which you could argue is, you know, approximate, you know, I could maybe have different pivot points, but it's based on the high hit from November 16th and the high hit on February 15th. Did get a fake out break above it, but it does look like we got rejected from there. The thing that makes it really tough as far as that indecision goes or the, um, is that it was green on the day, so it went up three cents also, what was the close on the 27th? And if I said Friday, I meant Thursday. Um, and so on Wednesday, the 27th, uh, the high was $2.99. The close was two cents above that. And so it's not like there was a topping signal or anything here following the 14.62% move up. But we did get a close above that high. So, I mean, with this big wick up, I think it's topping and I think it's going to be pulling back and, you know, not thinking about all of the levels from the Fibonacci retracement here, which still stands. So these are all the same levels from that video. I think it could be pulling back to either the 50% 618 or the 786. For me, looking at this with this red line here at $2 and 50 cents and that having, let's see, I guess historical significance going back here apparently I think I just put that line there I didn't realize uh, that there's this much history on it uh, let's see yeah I'm just gonna switch over uh, if I switch over to the weekly it's gonna make some lines wonky I bet um, but yeah I mean I see this pulling back to I see that the high is in you know right around three dollars and seven or eight cents you know you got the 618 level from this retracement going from the high here to the low here, price did go up to that level. Does look like, I mean, it's just with with this, with the charting, whether it's Fibonacci's, trend lines, tops, whatever, it's like if you got a number of levels lining up right around the same price, it's more likely that that's going to be respected. And so I feel like you got the 618 here, 308. You got the downtrend here. Uh, you know, which you could argue is approximate. We did get a wick above, didn't get a close above 308. I'd look for a close above 308. Maybe, maybe the bullish moves continue tomorrow. And if you get a close above 308, I think that could be some strength. But if you get a wick above and it can't close above, I would think that means it's pulling back to these levels. 
and I didn't mention this just now, but it does look like this could be a descending triangle. Those break to the downside. I did, I think, initially go over that around their earnings call. And, you know, I, I was right about it pulling back down to around 250. Since it did pull back to 250, and, and it actually broke below that, hitting a low of 238, that makes me think that level is going to be weaker because it was just retested. And so I would think that price is probably, you know, from, you know, where it's at now, it may not get another retest of $3, or I guess $3.08. $3 um, but if it does, I would think, unfortunately, if you're bullish on the company long term and you don't want to uh, take some profits or trim, you know, whatever, um, this shouldn't affect you. You know, it's just hold through it and wait for the dip to buy. Uh, but I feel like it's definitely hit resistance and it's going to be pulling back. I think it will be breaking below 222. I think I said 228 in the video. I had to uh, correct myself with the text. But yeah, I mean, that level has been tested multiple times. I could see it pulling back and bouncing from 222, maybe going up to 250. Uh, but then ultimately, I see it breaking lower, potentially going to 191 from this, you know, 1618 extension from this retracement here. Um, so I mean, that sucks. It's my, my outlook on Blink, not long term, not big picture. But just as far as what's going on with the chart on the on the daily time frame, seems like it topped and it's going to be breaking below these levels. So um, I guess brace for that. Uh, like if you see it dipping, you know, to the lows that it hit on Thursday, like the low of 291, that might be a dip buying opportunity, but it might also just be the beginning of a downside. And so I would think that dip buying opportunities are going to be around here, really, you know, 222 for a bounce. Um, but I think ultimately that will break just based on my understanding of the uh, descending triangle pattern that those do break to the downside. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful. I know that's a sucky uh, uh, perspective to have, but it's just what the chart's saying. And, you know, with that pullback to right around 250 and the bounce up, I was spot on with that. Um, I, I didn't partake in it. Actually, I did, you know, around earnings, I did buy a put and I made $1 on the put, uh, but I could have held that for longer because I think the put was for it to hit 250 uh, or maybe it was to go below three. Yeah. And I would have made money on that had I held it. So, uh, but I just, I have a tough time being bearish on stocks or, or making money being bearish. I, I, I'd rather just wait for the bottom and, and then buy at that. And so I see uh, the next one was PMEC. So I think I got that up here already. And I might actually clear some of these off because I have gone over Dogecoin. I just have that up there for me. Um, and let's see. Since I did cover this, I'm going to make sure this is on the uh, DGen Ed watch list as well. And uh, let's see. Yeah, so I will switch over to PMEC. Wow. Yeah, you, I think you said something about a 60% down day last week, so on Thursday. And so what's the news on this? Uh, well, I guess what is the company? Uh, Primec Holdings is a holding company. The company is technology-driven facility services provider in the public and private sectors operating in ma mainly in Singapore. Its services include uh, facilities services, stewarding services, cleaning services, offices, you know, et cetera. All right, so why is it down 66.75%? That's pretty crazy. Yeah, so with stocks like this, pretty like, and one thing about this too, you know, um, let's see, how could we have known that this would happen? Looking at the chart, I mean, there is a double top here, so there's something to that, but you don't see any big wicks to the upside. You actually see big wicks to the downside. So I'd actually think that this is a bull flag, that this would be going higher. So that's pretty surprising. Uh, and so it's like, you know, how do you know, does the double top signal or the bull flag signal win out? And so, you know, what I could see with this is you had basically 
more than a week of testing that. And then on, yeah, so let's see. And looking at, thinking about the volume with this, volume's pretty light. You just can't get above that level. Even with this big green day going up 1.5% on the day, closing green, closing higher than that previous day, you just can't get above that level. So I feel like it's just like, I mean, if you get like three, four, five days uh, and you just can't break above the level, that might be like, okay, well, it's probably more of a double top than a bull flag. Um, and so I would think that like if this is a bull flag, maybe five days, yeah, it could break higher. But because you have that double top, I think it's like after a few days, that double top signal wins out. And let's see, do we have a uh, bearish engulfing candle here? So this close was um, 382, and we got an open the following day. 394, so that's not, oh, sorry, um, close, I should say, because they're both red. Uh, 382, so yeah, it's the same price, so it's not bullish or bearish engulfing. Uh, but yeah, this down move, definitely not looking so good. Um, and so what could I see as support with this? I think this is a falling knife. Um, you got the lows over here, uh, 110. So maybe it forms a bottom around 110. That is what I could see with this. Um, and so that's still some more downside. Um, and yeah, I mean, and looking at the RSI too, even with that 66 plus percent drop, RSI still above 30. So yeah, I mean, I think this is going lower. Um, and let's see. Maybe, let, yeah, well, let's see a Fib retracement from the low there to the high here. Interesting, yeah, this, this did pull back to the 786, found support there. And then, you know, found support again at the 618 before, you know, double topping and dropping. So... Yeah, I think this is going lower. I think it's going to be a full retracement down to one, $1 basically. Um, so I'd, I'd not chase this, but maybe it springs and bounces back. But yeah, just from this respect to the level here, then broke below it. Now the 786 is going to be resistance. And uh, yeah, so I think that Maybe it's a dip buying opportunity at one, but then maybe it's going to go below one. So I, I'd be careful with it. And uh, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so NASCAR. Um, yeah, this one looks risky to me. Uh, <laughs> but but you do you. I know I know that you. Uh, Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was expecting there to be some news so we could figure out why that happened. Um, yeah, I, and so I just think that I'd at least wait for the RSI to be below 30 if you're thinking about trying to swing a rebound. And just, yeah, looking at these levels, full retracement uh, or more than that. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's like... Uh, yeah, I don't know, like I hear, maybe there's something in here. That's three days ago, so it's not going to be three days ago. That would maybe, yeah, so I'm, okay, so this is three, uh, holdings, reports, uh, 1H results. I don't know what that is. And so maybe there's some news here I can just pull up here. Um, let's see, um, so that's PMEC. So what's it say on here? Uh, Primac Holdings. Uh, shares dropped 64% to 140 after the company issued financial update and corporate highlights for the six months ending September 30th. So since it's a Singapore com a company based in Singapore, I believe uh, that you know they're basically they just basically reported their earnings, and that was a you know sell the news event, I guess. Um, and, and that was not a uh, quarterly earnings. That was six months. So, 
yeah, I could see this pulling back to 101 and then maybe and at least RSI to um, 31. Oh, and and something else that we could do here, looking at this chart, thinking about the RSI, this was, you know, basically a double top, higher high over here, 418. And then looking at the RSI, that is actually, you know, it's basically, you know, level at the top, but then lower high as far as the RSI goes. And also, let's see, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's not really, uh, it doesn't stand out too much as bearish divergence or anything, because it's like kind of flat at the top uh, uh, for the price. But, yeah, that's a risky one. Maybe maybe I could see there being a bounce, but I'd, I'd wait for a dollar or lower. Um, and, and yeah, Pepe, I saw your uh, comment. Uh, everyone give DJ and Ed your likes. Yeah, so... Uh, make sure you like the stream <laughs> and like any videos that that do stand out to you or if you want to like any ones that you watch. And um, and you can always put requests for other tickers and, you know, other videos. I get that a lot. So happy to, um, yeah, I mean, I, I could basically run out of ideas and I'll cover the same stock over and over and eventually it fades. Uh, and, you know, a lot of like the stocks that I tend to really cover um, or that I like to cover are ones that I hold, but they don't always perform that well. Like, like as far as videos go, like charge point, I love covering charge point, uh, but the videos don't always do that good. You just got to be volatile for people to want to watch. And then so, yep. Yeah, and then, so I'm, I guess I'm all caught up with the live chat. If there are any other, uh, last minute requests, I've been doing this for a little over an hour and a half. So happy to take more requests if you guys, if you guys got some, uh, but otherwise I'll probably sign off here soon. And on the note of liking this video, you know, happy to uh, take your likes, take your subscribes. If you like the alerts, cool. I, I think usually my videos aren't too time sensitive because I'm not doing like daily updates on the same ticker. Um, and I try to have, you know, basically like if I'm looking at the daily time frame for candles, try to have like a weekly, weekly perspective. So, um, for me personally, I don't like having alerts for channels that I subscribe to. I just watch the videos that stand out to me as being good. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's, yeah, all that I might actually, since, you know, since this is my stream, I might actually pull up Dogecoin again and I might pull up Rumble because I am very intrigued by both of these. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by Dogecoin just, you know, to hold it to the end of the year or longer. I think it's going to go to a dollar share, a dollar coin. And I just think that with Bitcoin at its all-time high and me expecting that to go a lot higher, I think that uh, the altcoins will definitely be going a lot higher. So I'm really excited about Dogecoin. Man, that Litecoin chart, though, is beautiful. Um, so I, I'm probably going to have to post a clip of that as a video. And let's see. I also wanted to look over Rumble because, yeah, I thought I put it, yeah, okay, right here. And so this, to me, just stands out as super, super beautiful. Inverse head and shoulders. And then with that, you got, like, this right shoulder is a cup handle. Or maybe this is a cup and handle. And so I just view this as being, you know, a really nice move. Thinking about how... You know, if price were to go from the base of that head up to the neckline, that's a move of, of about $5. Or if I were to adjust the base of it to be like over here, that's a move of about $4. And so from, you know, this neckline, you know, that break right around $8.30, let's just say $8 a share, right, right around from here, you know, moving up four, did I say four to $5? Yeah, I think four to five, that's five dollars, yeah. So going from eight to twelve to thirteen bucks a share. And and I, I just think that this might take a little while to play out because it reminds me a lot of Equestive. And so looking over at Equestive here, I pointed out this inverse head and shoulders took a while, like two months 
for it to finally break out. I had lost interest at that point. I didn't play it through. But based on that measured move, that would have suggested, you know, it's going up a dollar twenty-five. And so I was, you know, trying to accumulate at that yellow line here at 250. Um, and so from this final break, that would have put price, you know, right around four dollars a share. So that was my target, but I wasn't patient. I didn't wait for it. Went up to six dollars and twenty-three cents. So, you know, if I would have, you know, just loaded at 250. And, you know, of course, it's always, you know, if I would have, you know, all this stuff, 150% swing. Uh, but would I have held to $6? No. I would have sold at 4 But that's a 60% swing. That's pretty good. So, so I'm just thinking, like, looking at Rumble, and everybody is saying, oh, it's going to 10 It's going to 10 I feel like it's going to, you know, 5 five dollars up here i think it's going to 13 but just like i mean thinking about if this is a measured move you know like a quest have had a measured move this blew past that measured move and so i could see rumble going i could see rumble going to 13 let's see i could see rumble going to yeah i mean 1350 you know right around there that makes sense you got these tops over here but maybe it could squeeze higher than that like it did here and then pull back um, but yeah, I'm the Dogecoin and Rumble are my two like highest conviction plays right now. I'd say Rumble being shorter term than Dogecoin. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to you know, shift my focus, not trying to partake in everything that I talk about, but just to hone in on the ones that really stand out to me. And Rumble definitely stands out to me, although not that exciting right now because it's just you know it's like hanging out around this purple line. That's the neckline. I think that's a great dip buying opportunity, uh, right around eight bucks. You know, I was thinking seven bucks a share. I put out a video that you know seven dollar sale basically, and yeah, and then the lows over here were seven seventeen, seven eighteen. So if you got at seven dollars a share average over here, you know you'd be in the in the clear. So I think it's a pretty cool chart, but yeah. Um, I see a couple people still hanging out, so if you've got any requests for me, but I'm probably just going to sign off. And so with the chart up there, I might just throw this up here just so I can end that video because uh, I'll probably do a clip on Rumble. Uh, but yeah, but you know, those are just my thoughts. Uh, I actually, I screwed that up because I was thinking uh, about other stuff. Um, usually I just do that kind of on the fly at the end of every video. Um, but those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching. And so, yeah, that'll help me out. Oh. I almost stopped recording this because I have a habit of whenever I do that subscribe thing, I hit stop recording right after it. But, yeah, anyways, it's been fun hanging out with you guys. I will release clips from this live stream tonight and tomorrow, uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll do this before market opens. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'll just try to release some clips from this because uh, you guys had some pretty nice requests. And um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll try to do some more videos during the week. So let me know your requests. I won't be able to do an evening live stream, but I might be able to do a market live stream if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys have a great start to the week. Yeah, Jose, no problem. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, uh, great trading this week. Good luck to you all. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to do a live stream during market hours one of the days, maybe open on Wednesday. That might be fun. Um, unless there's some news uh, around a market open, I might try to do uh, a live stream around then. But yeah, take care of you guys. Hope you had a great Sunday and a great long holiday weekend. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.